See, men are teachable. Now, you don't say that they don't want you to be their teacher, but they're, they're trainable. You as women are not trainable. You're teachable if you have a teacher that you think is good, but you're not, not generally not by your spouse. Are you teachable? But men are trainable by their spouse. So, you know, if a man is with a woman who doesn't know how to love, it's kind of hopeless for him to change her. But women, you can change men by training them. You're not really changing him. You're controlling him without control. You're training him, just like you would do a dog, basically. You, you ask for things, small requests, sit, and he gets a big reward. He learns to sit in your presence. It's a journey. Now, let's say he's already trained. That means he had a dad who provided for his mother and was very successful at that. Those guys are rare. And because in the father's generation, the skills that men had then were the skills who made money to please a woman. Okay, so that's all you had to do. My dad made money, not a whole lot, but he was more successful than most around the neighborhood. So that was a prize. Uh, my, my, my mother had seven children. She was busy raising children most of her life. <laughs> and he provided for her. And that's all she needed from him. And then he felt love from her, you see, and they had sex and she loved him. And that was because he provided something. Women have to be in a situation where someone is providing for them something of value to them. Then their estrogen levels go up. And as estrogen goes up, you can fall in love. As estrogen goes up, you can feel a healthy kind of love. There's unhealthy love and there's healthy love. There is. Unhealthy love is I must have him. I'll do whatever he wants I'll, to get him. That's not healthy love. Healthy love is he loves me and I, I'm so lucky to find him and it's so great he found me. <laughs> and, and what a wonderful relationship this is because he's, he listens to me. He cares about me. He's kind and gentle. He has a good job. He works hard. He'll do things that he doesn't even like to do for me. He does all these sacrifices with a smile. It's amazing. He carries heavy things. He does dirty, dirty jobs outside and doesn't complain. He doesn't whine. Find a guy like that. Well, you're not going to, generally speaking, unless you train him. And you train him by appreciating. It's like a, any training. You, you, you ask what you want and you get a reward. They'll do more of that. And when you train a dog, if you yell at the dog, you'll get less. That's old-fashioned training. If you say to a dog, uh, men are not just dogs, of course, but these are, <laughs> I have to say our relationship got better after Bonnie learned dog training school. Um, the, the teacher taught us that um, if dog is jumping up on you, how to train them to not jump up on you is to not say bad dog. My wife used to say bad dog, bad dog. Dog just kept doing it. <laughs> Certainly don't hit the dog. Then you kill the dog. I mean, if you hit the dog, they might learn a lesson, but you suppress who they are. Their aliveness goes away. You can see traumatized dogs and there's no spark. You know, my dogs are jumping up and down at 15 years old, like little puppies. They stay alive. So, cause they're not punished. So what you do to train the dog not to jump up on you is simply when they jump up on you, turn around the other direction, ignore them for a few minutes, for a few moments, ignore them. And if they keep jumping up on you, then gently, slowly walk away. They get no attention, no attention on negative behavior. And then as soon as they stop jumping up on you, then you turn around and you say, sit, and you give them a reward. So what you've just done is shifted from focusing on a negative behavior to giving them a positive behavior that you reward. And this is called positive reinforcement, which is true of all species, including men. 